great. All right. Okay. Let's just give it one more minute. Yeah, absolutely. If we have any more people jump on. I know I had a challenge with the link was not opening and somebody just sent me a note that the link is not working for them either. So we may have a little bit of a challenge today. All uh, right, well, we will do whatever we have to. Let me send her the login here. Davies, can we put the, the way to log in um, on the Facebook group just in case other people have the same problem? Yeah, I did. Um, I posted it, so I'm going to actually do a test. The link you sent me worked fine. Okay, yeah, some I guess some places it's not working. Maybe something got cut off the end. Okay, well, I let's just go ahead and jump in here. Um, I'm gonna just take a quick minute uh, to kind of just reiterate where what why we're doing this. Um, thank you everybody for joining us today. I'm Sandra Rathy. Um, I decided to do this to help us all learn about luxury and um, hear from people across the country, hear what's working for them, get a little bit of people's backstory on how they ended up getting into luxury. So we have. In our area, we do have luxury, um, not as much as in maybe some other areas of the country, or even, um, you know, we if we go a little further east, there's a lot more luxury than where we are in particular. So uh, I want to educate our people and grow luxury for us so that we are known as the luxury people, um, KW as a whole, as opposed to some of those other names that we won't mention. Um, we want to be the ones that come first to mind. So that's why I started doing this, and you, we're on our official second second month of doing this. Um, last month, we had Bill DeVore. Hopefully, everybody got to hear his story. He had a great inspirational story. Um, and so now this month, um, you know, as I'm looking to figure out who am I going to interview, one of the things that came to my mind is places that I've lived before and what I enjoyed across the country. Uh, most of you don't know, but I used to live in Connecticut and absolutely loved living there. Loved the hills, the hiking, um, the cooler weather, the architecture, loved everything about living there. I unfortunately had to move, but Florida's not too bad either. So um, I did a little research to find somebody in the Connecticut area that we could connect with. And so today we're gonna to be talking with Christine Olenek. She is out of the Connecticut, actually Western Connecticut, ironically. Yes. <laughs> and um, she comes, she is also an ambassador with KW Luxury. So she obviously has a wealth of knowledge if they chose her for that very important role. Um, Christine, comes to us um, with a lot of great background, a lot of awards, and is involved with a lot of different things. Um, one of the things that impressed me the most about her was her social media. She's super involved. She's very, uh, she does a lot of video. I love your videos, Christine. Thank you. We'll Thank talk you. more about that. Yeah. But um, going through her Facebook uh, her Facebook page. She has lots of videos. She's she is not afraid of the camera at all. Love that. So hopefully she can give us those of us that have a little bit more fear of that a little bit of sage advice on that. Um, she also has been honored as a women's business advocate at the Moffley Media's first annual Women of Influence Awards. Congratulations. That's amazing. Thank you. You can tell us a little bit more about that. Yes. Um, she's also been interviewed and featured on the Channel 12 News. So she is not just a great luxury agent. She is um, an expert in the field. And she's known throughout her area um, as the expert. So welcome, Christine. Thanks for joining us. Wow, that was great. Thank you so much for such a nice introduction. And I'm thrilled to be here. I'm here in Weston, Connecticut, um, which I'm sure is is 
it's very similar, except for you have the palm trees down there. But anyway, I'm very excited to be on. So thank you for having me. And, and what's funny is one of the reasons why I really badly wanted to be a luxury ambassador was basically exactly why you're doing this, to help spread the word about luxury. Certainly when you think of Keller Williams, nobody thinks luxury, so I'm really trying hard to help change that and doing so on social media and any way that I possibly can. That's that's interesting that you have that same um, perception or, or, you know, about KW being luxury. I love that, you know, you're so far apart from us distance wise, but yet, you're, you're feeling the same thing. So we're Absolutely. in this together. We're and from the start, when I joined Keller Williams three years ago, when somebody approached me to talk to Keller Williams, I'm like, Keller Williams, like, and we're in a luxury area here. I was like, why in the world Keller Williams? And then once I started to learn more about it, obviously, you know, I, I joined immediately and, and being one of the only luxury agents in our Keller Williams um, group, I really wanted to help change that. And, you know, even recently, I just got back from the Boston Luxury Symposium, um, which was great, by the way. I mean, just amazing. And I love meeting agents all over. But, you know, there wasn't even, there's not even a presence on LinkedIn. So I just started a LinkedIn Keller Williams Luxury Re Referral Group. So please, everybody, um, I put the link in chat. Please be sure to, you know, to um, to join it. But you know, little things like that. Um, I'm really trying to to get the word out there. Well, thank you for that. I'm I'm glad to see more people doing that, and uh, we are we are going to take over the luxury world here if we all work together. And it's interesting. A client of mine recently said, "You know, tell me why why Keller Williams and why luxury and why should I choose Zio?" And I did some research. We're the fourth largest in the world for luxury. Like nobody knows that. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's my mission as well as yours. And hopefully, you know, we can we can <laughs> get the word out there. Yeah, we're gonna take it over. Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> so Christine, tell us a little bit about yourself. What is your background and how did you get into real estate? So great question. Um, my background is actually advertising and marketing and event planning. And I was in uh, corporate advertising for a very long time and then was pregnant, had, had my twins and was a stay at home mom, but always still wanted to do something. So independently, independently, I helped friends who had small marketing businesses and I was helping to market their business and plan some events. And then I was asked to start um, a local women's networking group, which um, I did and I loved. And we would have monthly events at different venues um, around Fairfield County. So it was a great way to reach out to the community and get to know other businesses. Um, and years ago, my mother was a real estate agent and I always thought, oh my God, it was just, it was kind of in my blood and we've moved a lot. My father worked for IBM. So growing up, I moved 25 times. Wow. <laughs> So I really did see the good, bad, and the ugly. I really can talk to buyers. I know what they're going through. And um, after my kids were older, I, I received a couple phone calls from some top agents here saying that they wanted me, um, they wanted to hire me to do their marketing and do their open houses and promote them as events. And I thought, you know what? Now's the time I'm going to get my real estate license and market my own listings and host my own events. So that was about nine years ago. And what I found was I really needed a way to be better than all the other agents that were out there because I've only been doing it a short time. So I found that my marketing and my advertising and event planning really helped propel me. Nobody else was using social media at the time and, and doing videos and things like that. So that really got me a lot of exposure. Excellent. And how many years, how long have you been doing real estate? So just about nine. Just about nine years. So that's really not in the grand scheme of, of real estate. That's not a lot of years. No, it's, yeah, it's really not. Right. So to go from somebody who wasn't doing real estate at all to not only a successful agent, but a very successful agent and a luxury agent and luxury ambassador in nine years is pretty amazing. 
Well, thank you. And I've only been with Keller Williams three of those years. I wish I had started at Keller Williams because I was with very small boutique um, brokerages and really didn't have a chance to thrive or to learn. So I feel like I really missed out on my early years of real estate, um, but I'm happy I'm here now. Well, we're glad you're here too. Thank you. So, so tell us, what would you say is like the number one most important thing that you do that, it, you know, has propelled you to where you're at? Um, um, that's a great question. You know, when I first meet with clients, it's really about being there and listening to them. They're going through, you know, being a buyer or seller. It's a very, very, very emotional time. So I really try to listen. I mean, listen, listen, listen very well to know exactly what their needs are and address those needs and make sure I give them a great experience. Um, and I do find that I'm found because of social media as well. People see me, clients see me at the... For my listing clients, they know that they're going to get a lot of exposure for their their um, property. Okay, so you are people actually contacting you directly from only having seen you on social media? Some yes, others it just helps you know um, helps me get the listing if they're if they're because I say in my listing appointments check out the other people that you're interviewing see if they're on. If they're on social media, if they're if they're marketing their their listings, and once they do that, typically, you know, if that's what they're worried about, you know, I will win that listing appointment because so many other agents just aren't doing it. Great. Do you feel like that um, the, the social media piece is important for all age groups that you're dealing with, or is it more oh, of one specific age group? Absolutely. So every age group. Absolutely. Like They're all on different platforms, but yes, absolutely. It's huge. <laughs> you know, it's 99, no, 98% of the people start their search online. Either their search for an agent or their search for a property. So, you know, you've, you've got to be out there, especially right. with all the competition of, of all the other realtors out there. Right. So I only checked you out on Facebook. Where else would we find you? LinkedIn. I'm, I'm big on LinkedIn. Um, Instagram. YouTube, and yes, TikTok. I think I'm probably the oldest person on TikTok, but <laughs> I am on there. And I must say, it is fun. I, I'm not dancing, but <laughs> it is fun just to kind of, you know, you could, you could be a little bit more silly on TikTok. Right. So is the dancing coming up? Are you working up to it, that? No, that, that's not going to happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can do it. I, I'm looking forward to seeing that. All right. So that's, that's great. So um, you know, how do you plan out your social media? Do you actually have a plan or do you literally wake up and you're like, well, today I'm just going to do ABC? Oh, God, that's a good question. I try to make it very timely. I try to make my videos very timely. I typically block out a day and I will do seven. I'll change shirts. I'll change hair, makeup. I'll go outside, inside and do like seven videos in a day. My videos aren't long, but they're, I, I try to make them very timely. Right now, I've been talking a lot about interest rates and, you know, the fact that yes, they were at 3%, they're now at 6%, still lower than the national average of 8%. So try to be very timely. I also do, you know, sillier ones like, you know, fall decorating, um, easy fall staging tips, um, a lot of seller tips, buyer tips, and literally I just Google the, the topic. Um, I use KCM too for their information and their charts, and then I'll just do a video around that. Great. And I've, I've seen some of your videos. A lot of them are really short. They're really just yeah. like one little nugget and it's very, I'm going to say casual. You don't yeah, look like you're I like, mean, uh, you know, that's just me and my personality. I used to try to make it so formal and it was like, oh, boring, boring, boring. And it just kind of wasn't me. So they're little, they, they found that, you know, the short videos are now what's, you know, attracting it, the more viewers. Um, and people just don't have the attention span to listen to me more than, you know, 30 seconds at the most. Right. Yeah, I love it. I love it. They're so they're just like spontaneous. Um, you don't look rehearsed. You just look very comfortable. Um, 
not everybody is like that. A lot of us, including um, myself, are a little bit afraid of the video. Um, so what would you, what would your recommendation be for people? Like what kind of advice could you give the people who have not yet been able to get into it because they're just afraid of themselves? Well, that's a really great question. And trust me, it took me a very long time. I, I was, I hated it. Um, but what I first started doing was I wasn't in front of the camera. I would just be walking like down a Weston street, like reasons to move to Weston and showing Weston. Um, or, you know, check out my new listing, doing a video of the listing. I, I was talking, but I wasn't in front of the camera. I also started this at winter time. So when I did get on camera, I had, you know, a hat on, I had sunglasses on. So you, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about hair and makeup. Um, so that really helped as well. But just the more you do it, the more comfortable you are doing it. I was on News 12 again last week and I'm so much more comfortable. I, I mean, I was very, very nervous. Don't get me wrong. But when I did it the first time I was interviewed, um, I was just so nervous because I just wasn't used to being on camera. But the more you do it, the easier it comes. And just just practice. You don't have to put them out there if you don't want to put them out there. None of mine are live. Um, and I edit it and I use filters, you know, and just put it out there. That's great. That's really, I love that story about you know, you had the glasses on and the, the hat on and everything. <laughs> if you check out my early YouTube videos, you don't see me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love I'm that. I'm totally, yeah, covered up, so. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. You know, I recently did a video for a South Florida regional mastermind that we did, and I literally had to do like 20 takes. And then I said, forget it, whatever it is, it is, I'm done. Exactly. And I was so relieved when I finally just sent it. I said, you know, it's not perfect, but just let it go. And it doesn't have to be. There is one that I'm laughing in. I, I, get, I got tongue tied and I start cracking up. And that one got more views than any of the ones that, you know, I thought were perfect. I love it. You, you know, and it's, I think it's really hard for some people um, to break past that, to break past not being perfect and then rewatching it. Do you rewatch yourself or do you just send it? I do just to edit them. Um, <clears throat> Cause it's just me. I'm standing behind the camera. You know, I've got a tripod, that's it. So I have to edit them, you know, just cut them on. Um, yeah. You know, sometimes it's just, oh, it's like, oh my God. But again, I just put it out there. Okay. And do you have anybody that helps you with this or are you the one doing everything start to finish? So uh, I'm trying to get somebody to help me. The problem is it's my background and it's what I love to do. So um, I do most of it. I do have a full-time assistant who will, you know, once I finish one, I'll say, okay, I'll give her the wording, put it on TikTok, you know, YouTube, LinkedIn, I'll have her post. So she is helping me with it, but nobody's really helping me, you know, film them or edit it. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, it's just me for now. Okay. Well, as you continue to grow, you may end up having to add somebody to help with that. Yes. I'm actually interviewing some interns for it. Nice. Oh, that's great. Interns are a great way to go. We love interns. Yes. Um, okay, what else can you tell us um, from a luxury standpoint in terms of advertising your properties um, besides social media and your typical, like, what are you doing creative, I guess, on social media about a listing that you have or um, what other avenues are you doing besides social media? Well, the great thing about being part of the luxury group and having a luxury um, property is is automatically, you know, sent to the Barron's Group, Mansions Global, and the Wall Street Journal. So that in itself is huge. And once it gets on one of those, you know, I'll screenshot it and I'll send that out and repost it on social media and LinkedIn. So that's really a great resource. I mean, clients love that to be seen. And then other clients are like, or other people are like, wow, you could get them in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, <clears throat> so that's huge. And again, I just kind of keep up with whatever is, you know, all the rage today is reels. So I do reels um, of my listings, you know, different videos, different shots, turn those into reels and they try to, they get as many views as possible. I don't pay for a lot of advertising. Again, I'm do, I'm, I'm getting, you know, the, the word out there through all my social media channels. I also use Pinterest, 
So it, they're, they're getting a lot of views. Um, I also put open houses on all my local calendar sites, on the Weston Patch, on the Weston Today News site, on the News 12 site. Um, and I don't think any other agents are doing things like that. Right. No, that's great. I I wasn't aware that you could do that. that you could Absolutely. Um, we also have a next door site. I put it on. There's about 10 different places that I put it on. Also Facebook, the local Facebook groups. So I really promote, um, you know, a lot. Okay. And do you think that that is, you, are you doing it more to sell the house or to get listings? Both. Okay. Absolutely. Um, are you getting and there's a lot of people in Connecticut that move just to different parts of Connecticut. You know, most of our people come from New York City, but also a lot of people in Connecticut move to different towns. They downsize, you know, from let's say Weston, they're they're moving to a condo on Westport. So um it, it's for both, absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, and how about outside of social media? What what are you doing for advertising outside of social media? Not much. Um, I will send postcards around the neighborhood for just sold for um, new listings, but not much. Okay. Well, that's great. Um, I will, that means again, you know, pre COVID, my open houses, I would have, you know. I would really make, I would have local vendors there. I'd have, you know, chocolates from a chocolate store. I'd have, you know, sandwiches from the local deli. I really made it a community event and I promoted it as such. So, but again, that, that was all basically through social media and the local calendar sites. Okay, great. And how did you get local vendors that would par partner with you on that? Just called them and asked. I mean, honestly, it, it's amazing. When I first started doing it, and I first started doing it for my women's networking group, people love it. You know, it's free advertising. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's, it's, and if somebody says no, I just move on. And 99% of the time, it, it, the local businesses love it. Great. Um, and, uh, with your open houses, it's mostly, again, social media, you're advertising it there. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And how about with your clients? Do you give them any kind of uh, weekly report of what you've been doing? What is your marketing strategies, things like that? Uh, well, pre-COVID, yes. COVID, you know, we'd list on Thursday, it was sold by Monday. Right, right. So there was there really wasn't much. Out there. They weren't even asking because we've sold the house. So they weren't asking what, what we were doing, but certainly in my listing presentations, I go through what I'm going to do. Um, and again, pre-COVID, yes, I would give them an update and tell them what I'm doing. Some some wanted that, some really didn't care. So um, again, it was it was customized for the client. Okay. What? How does your business look now? Not your personally, but what is your market doing now that we are you know, that we're kind of in a shift where we are. What is your market looking like? We are definitely in a shift, um, a kind of scary shift because we were so busy for so long. Um, we are the first county outside of New York City and Connecticut. So when COVID first hit, er everybody from the city wanted rentals. Um, because I thought this is going to be short term. We just want rentals. And um, I had some great high end rentals at the time. Then those rentals turned into, OK, COVID's not over. It's the end of the summer. You know, God, we've got to buy something. Um, and it was just it's been so crazy for the last two years that to have this free time while it's great, um, it's kind of like we are really working hard for buyers and for, and to get, you know, even listings that they're, you know, they feel that they missed the market and they feel like, oh God, nobody's gonna buy with the 6% interest rate. So I'm trying to educate them and let them know, again, there are buyers out there who are ready, willing, and able. And the 6%, while it's yes, higher than it was, um, is still lower than the national average. And it could continue to go up. So now's the time to buy or sell. Yeah, that's the same message that we're we're trying to get out. Um, right. Yeah, it's definitely 
a little, it's interesting right now to see what's happening. And we still have some houses that are selling extremely fast and might get multiple offers. And then we have other ones that are sitting that we would have expected to be sold. Right. So it's, it's keeping us on our toes. And some of our newer agents are definitely um, in for a wild ride because they don't know any different. They know oh. that things flew off the shelves during the pandemic. So now right. it's like, oh, we actually have to market it and advertise it and communicate with our sellers what's happening. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I know you, you were on Channel 12 News. Tell us how that came about. So that came about, um, so I'm, I'm big on LinkedIn. Um, and actually, I'm going to be teaching a class on it. So I'll let you know. Um, I'd love to have all, all of you join it. Um, LinkedIn is such a resource um, and it's such a great resource and so many agents don't use it. And again, I'm trying to change that. I reached out. I literally, I went to the News 12 page. I um, I messaged the producers and the on-air talent and said, you know, real estate's a really hot topic right now. Would love to be talking about it. And um, about a year ago, they interviewed me and said, great, we'd love to have you on. So that was the first time I was on. And then they reached out again last week and said, you know, we need an update. What's going on with the market, interest rates? Would you like to come on again? So um, it's really been great. That's awesome. So you really made that happen. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I did. So, but again, it was so easy just by sending a LinkedIn note. Right. <clears throat> All the local press, I mean, everybody's looking for stories, you know, so if you could help them out in any way, they love yeah. it. You've got a good point because just like I write a newsletter and I'm always asking people for ideas, like even just a little nugget for an idea. So when you provide one, how easy is that for them? Absolutely. You know, we, we think that things are so hard but really they're pretty simple. You just have right. to take the, make the effort and reach out. I'm, I'm going to tell you that I'm one of those bad agents about LinkedIn. I have a LinkedIn. I have probably a 1500 connections and I have no idea what to do with it. I, I, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I, really, right, you've got to I don't know what to do class. with it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have to go to your class. Um, you know, I'm pretty good with putting things on Facebook and we're, we're, you know, getting there with Instagram, but LinkedIn, um, I, I personally haven't even really understood the value of LinkedIn. Um, I have somebody who posts our properties on there and I, you know, I get a little notification on my phone, like three people liked it. I'm like, woohoo, I got three, you know, <laughs> what are we looking to do on LinkedIn? How oh like my God, it's so good and underutilized. I um, reach out to expired listings on LinkedIn. Nobody else is doing that. Looking them up, their, their names right there. You can Google, you know, Joe Smith, Weston, Connecticut. Send an introduction um, email and say, you know, saw your house came off the market. I'm just introducing myself. You know, can we set up the time to talk? So that's one one great way just to do it that way. But also, you can do it by you can just search again, search Weston, Connecticut, or Weston, Florida connect with everybody in your community and just introduce yourself. I'm Christina Lennick. I live in Weston. I'm a neighbor. I just wanted to introduce myself. If you ever need any real estate help, please be sure to think of me. I love it. It's so simple. It's so simple and nobody's doing it. Including me. Um, so <laughs> how many students are doing it? Believe me, when I teach this class, everybody's like, oh my God, I never thought of that. Yeah, you know, they really, I have never seen a LinkedIn class. You see Facebook classes, Instagram, you know, all of those, but I've never heard somebody doing a real estate LinkedIn class. So this is exciting. All right, I'm going to send you all an email to my next class. Awesome. I appreciate that. So I'll definitely be there. Um, uh, I, for, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, can you do videos on LinkedIn? Absolutely. Oh. All my videos go on LinkedIn. I think there's a time limit, but mine are generally under a minute anyway. So, okay. But you could also, I mean, even if you had a longer video, put it on YouTube and then just put the link on, you know, write, write a clever title and then just put the link on and, and you right. know, that can be as long as you want. Okay. All right. So you're inspiring me to do <clears throat> videos and to learn LinkedIn. I'm, I'm on it. I'm going to do it. Um, 
tell, can you tell us what is your average price point? Um, about a million dollars. Nice, nice. Okay, so where, where we are, I think in general, the average price point is more in the $400,000 range. Uh -huh. um, my team, we sell some luxury, so we're <clears throat> keeping up. Our average is like between 500 and 550. Uh, so we would all love to be in your shoes at a million. That would be amazing. It's, you know, um, Connecticut has very charming, small little towns. So while I'm in Weston and that's the average in Weston, you know, two towns over Norwalk, it, it's probably the same as you down in Weston, Florida. So, you know, a million's on average in my exact town. But again, Westport is literally like my backyard. Right. Um, Westport is probably 1.5 million. In Norwalk, it's probably more about 400,000. So there's all these little different pockets and different price points. In Greenwich, you know, it's 3 million. Right. Now, do you feel like some people may not list with you because they feel like you're a luxury agent and they have a property, you know, 500,000? Do you feel like there's any, any thoughts of that? So sadly, yes, I have heard that. Um, <clears throat> that's why I try to do a little something for everybody um, in my videos. Um, and try and try to just be me and not so serious. Um, you know, everybody remembers the beautiful homes that you post on Instagram and Facebook. Nobody remembers the little condos that I sell or the rentals that, you know, I, I also do. You know, I help my son's college friends get rentals. You know, I don't just do luxury. Um, but I have heard that like, oh my God, no, I didn't, I never thought you'd work with me because you're just a luxury agent. So I, I try to address that in, in not just being, you know, just it being more approachable, I guess. Right. Okay. Yeah. And that makes sense. Cause we, we've definitely, we've heard that a few times. Oh, we didn't think you'd want a little condo or, right. and I'm like, no, bring us the condos. Yeah, bring bring it on. On. Of course I want a little condo. <clears throat> So we've got a lot of people on here that um, I'm going to open it up for questions in a minute. But um, before I do that, what would be your advice? Because I'm sure several people on here are people that are not doing luxury yet, but they're here because they want to learn how to get into luxury. What would be your your best suggestion to them for somebody who's like brand new looking to get into luxury? So um, go to where the luxury people are. I mean, if you guys, you know, <clears throat> if you're golfers, you know, try to go to a golf outing or a tennis players or, or, you know, if there's an open house at luxury listings, certainly go try to talk to those other agents, just kind of get to learn what's going on in the luxury market and certainly know your market and your numbers in that luxury world. Do some posts about, you know, a... Um, give me the name of like what a luxury area is in your area. Uh, Lighthouse Point. Okay, Lighthouse Point. Start doing videos on Lighthouse Point. Post them all over. Start being the knowledgeable broker in the luxury areas. Again, if you don't want to be on camera, that's fine. <clears throat> Take pictures of different things to do in Lighthouse Point. Do a video about that. Do a reel about that. Do a post about that. Put it on LinkedIn. You know, there's so many opportunities that you can do um, to start being seen as the luxury agent in Lake Point. So simple, right? Yes, exactly. <clears throat> and it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost anything. And it and doesn't have to be overnight. Big classes but too. Yeah, the more they see you in luxury, you know, standing in front of a big house, it doesn't have to be for sale or whatever, or just walking down the street, um, talking about just, uh, you know, the... Monday market update in Lake Hills, Florida. I love it. So simple. So simple. All right. Anything else you want to share before we open it up to questions? No, no. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. So guys, um, I think Davies, what's the easiest? Have them do the, the hand, the uh, virtual hand raising. And let's ask Christine some questions. Let's, let's get <clears throat> down dirty with whatever we want to know about luxury here. Okay, so go ahead and raise your digital hand. That way we can call on you. 
um, and let's get some questions answered. I know I, we do have two questions in the chat if we want to yeah. start with those. Sure. Uh, one comes from James. He's actually, I think, on the phone right now. But it says, does Christine have a document that she created that gives her the metrics on what she does on different platforms for the week? So your social media posts. So um, I do a little chart like this. This is for my videos. So I know where I put them. This obviously changes all the time. But um, I do like to keep track of it because as I'm just looking at it, it's like, OK, there's a lot of empty spaces. Dawn, I forgot to post that video on, you know, LinkedIn or on TikTok. So I do keep track of it. Um, <clears throat> I don't start my week by saying, okay, on Monday, this is what I'm going to do. On Tuesday, that's what I'm going to do. Um, every day, I try to think of a new one to post in different places. I don't want to post them all on the same day, the same time on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and, and LinkedIn. I try to, to mix it up. So that's interesting because I would be like, all right, I'm just going to put it everywhere. If I did one video, I want to just get the most use out of that. So, so I put it everywhere, just not at the same time. Oh my gosh, that's so smart. I because a lot of my that. Facebook and Instagram followers are the same. So, you know, I'll, 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 I'll do one. Let's just say it was a, mor a mortgage video. I'll do that in the morning on Instagram, then the next day I'll do it on Facebook. And then if they're seeing it twice, great, they're just re-seeing it. But yeah, I try to, to you know, on YouTube, you know, it can be anytime. And, um, but I don't wanna post seven, you know, videos on LinkedIn all on the same day. I, I, I'll, I'll film them and then I'll put one a day on LinkedIn. Right, but you're not putting that same video everywhere. You're staggering it on your, Wow, I'm putting the same video everywhere. I'm just staggering when I'm doing so. Amazing. How that, again, every, I keep saying it so simple, but yet I didn't think of that. I'm taking the same thing and posting it everywhere. Yeah. And also I then go back later in the day, everywhere I've posted, I respond to every single person who has left a message. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Okay. Um, next question on here is, can you share your YouTube channel? Oh, absolutely. It's Christine Finch Olenek. Um, let's, I don't know if I can quickly get it up in the chat, but if you just type that, so it's Christine and then my middle name is Finch, F-I-N-C-H and Olenek, as you can see on the straight on this screen um, and Sandra, I can certainly send it to you. Um, yeah. I'm gonna and, and I think there's two, so you want to make sure you go to the one that has all my videos on it. <clears throat> all right, I think I found it and I just put it in the chat. Great. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you, Davies. There are there's another question in here. We have do you play the same content in various platforms or do you vary the content per platform? So it's the same content, but I may vary the title. So for, you know, let's just say I'm talking about mortgage rates, you know, on TikTok, I'll say mortgage rates, you know, applying for a mortgage rate hack, hack of the day. You know, I wouldn't say that on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, I'll make it. Today's, you know, um, here's a great tip for what to do when applying for a mortgage. So it'll be the same video, just different titles. So how did you learn which lingo went with which platform? I, um, I, I listened to a lot of podcasts on the subject okay. and follow the top agents who are crushing it on the different platforms. Okay. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay. We have another question. It says, do you promote your luxury properties internationally? That's a great question. I don't, I don't. Um, but now that it was brought up, I should. Um, I love that question. I don't, obviously I, I put it on Keller Williams on the luxury pages. Um, and I know that that's international on Facebook. But I don't do more than that. But that's a great, yeah, that's, I, I don't, but I should. 
All righty. One more. It's uh, what do you think about all the lead generation companies? I hear a lot of negatives. Have you used one? And if so, what is your opinion on this method of trying to get leads? Um, so I have used Zillow. Um, I guess it was worth it when I first started. Um, I am hearing these days that leads are kind of drying up because there just aren't very many buyers. I don't really use them. Um, it's always something I'm thinking about. And I certainly talk to, you know, the Zillows whenever they're promoting something or realtor.com. My, um, our market center is looking into lead sources and, and, um, they're actually doing a class next week about what they have found in pricing for like the boom towns and all the other top ones out there. <clears throat> so they're kind of doing the homework for us and then letting us know. And we're going to hear from different people from those companies, you know, and, and kind of hopefully hear what's working and what's not working. I mean, certainly right now, um, you know, it might be a good time to learn more about them. Our leads have kind of dried up. Um, so it's a scary time. And I don't know, any help that you can get, it, it might be worth it. I, I I really try to, my leads mostly come from referrals from past clients and from great agents like you guys. Um, and, and I'm really, really... Um, focused on being that resource for as a you know community in my town that being said my leads have dried up as well you know um so I don't know anything that you could do to help your business it may be worth it I would definitely do a lot of research and and ask people who've done it in the past and and see if it works awesome we have another really great question it's with the market changing what does your price reduction conversation sound like with your luxury agents, especially if they state they don't need to sell and they just want to keep their price? That's great. Um, and it's, I just go back to the data. It's just data, data. And I say, here's what the market is showing us. And I come packed with data. You know, look here. What do you think about X, Y, and Z? What do you think your home Okay, two months ago is 2.5 million. It's now based on this data. Here are the other two comps. Do you think your home, where do you think your home would fit? You know, we've got to look at the competition. We've got to look at what has most recently sold. I keep going back to the data. I actually have that exact um, scenario happening and it was a 2.5 million dollar home it's no longer a 2.5 million dollar home and it's a divorce situation so we can't list it yet until the courts agree but um yeah next week i'm gonna have to be telling them it's probably now a 1.8 million dollar home and it's not going to be an easy conversation um but i'll have to just keep going back to the data uh, I just want to say that I love how you just kept going back to what do you think and helping them self-discover using the facts. So that Absolutely. Was uh, another question. What are your thoughts on staging homes? How do you introduce the concept? And do you think it is worth it to the seller? It seems like staging has become too pricey. So some staging is crazy pricey. Um, you don't have to stage an entire home for starters. Um, sometimes all you need is, you know, a stager to come in and just edit and have the stager, be, and we offer complimentary um, consultations, have the stager come in and say, oh my God, you've got to take down those, you know, 1980s curtains. You've got to remove all the knickknacks. You've got to do this and that. Start you know, pre-packing now. Um, and then sometimes you only just need to stage one or two rooms. Um, so that's how I start that conversation. We do know that in many homes, staging does sell. Um, and, you know, certainly for the pictures, again, it's your one and only chance to, you know, have them at that first impression. Um, but I do not believe that you have to stage an entire home. And to shop around for different stages, you, you know, you, it does not have to be thousands and thousands of dollars. When you have a vacant home, will you stage that most of the yes. time? 
uh, so, but again, not the entire home. The, the, the main rooms that really need to be staged, the living room, the family room, you know, maybe, you know, in the, you know, maybe that outdoor living space, something that, and certainly a room that nobody kind of knows what to do with, like, okay, let's make that a home office, let's make that a gym, but those are easy staging things to do. Again, it does not have to be an entire household. I love that you said about the outdoor space, because most people overlook that. And depending on the property, the outdoor space can actually be the focal point of what you're selling, especially Absolutely. where you are, I would imagine. Absolutely. Now, you know, homes come with outdoor fire pits, like that's like a must. Um, outdoor grilling, you know, I mean, it's it's cold here at night, but so many of our homes have outdoor fire pits. It's another place to entertain and, you know, really add space to your home. Yeah, I agree with you. We do have a hand up, but before we get to you, uh, Rania, I believe is how you pronounce it. Sorry. Um, there is just a follow-up question to that staging is how sure. can you really measure the return on investment from staging a home? That that's a tough one. Um, I, I, I don't know. I literally go by the experts numbers. I do know I had a very funky, like Brady Bunch home, um, that was totally empty and our stagers came in and did again, just the main rooms that first, when you open the door, kind of what are we doing with this Brady Bunch staircase and living room situation and the stager nailed it and people came in and said oh my god this is so cool what a cool california vibe instead of like oh my god what a 1970s brady bunch vibe so again we did not do the entire house we did that first um living room area and one or two other rooms we left the bedrooms as bedrooms you know you don't have to stage the entire thing Awesome. All right. Uh, Rania, Rania, sorry. <laughs> yes, Rania. Um, so my question was, as a new agent wanting to tap into the luxury market, would you recommend waiting until you kind of have maybe a few transactions um, under your belt before you kind of go and try and tap into the luxury market? Sorry, more knowledge. So no, no. I, I would say partner with a luxury agent. You know, host their open houses, shadow them. Um you know, um, help them post on social media, just be that go-to person. I would just, you know, um, definitely start that way and you'll learn it quickly. Okay. And then, um, my kind of, my follow-up question was, do you think you have to market yourself as either a luxury agent or I guess a regular agent and kind of pick your lane? Because sometimes I find that you know, if someone is looked at as luxury agent, it could be intimidating to maybe first time home um, yes. buyers and whatnot. But then I also find that if you kind of just play it small all the time, then maybe you might never kind of, you know, get into Well, that's kind of why I, I try to mix it up on social media. Right. Yes, again, everybody, everybody comments on my huge homes that are simply gorgeous. Nobody comments on my little condos that I have, but I still put them in the mix. Um, I still do videos for first time home buyers, you know, telling them that you don't have to put 20% down. So I try to talk to all price points um, in my social media mix so that they know um, that I do all price points. And you can even put that in your title, you know, in, in on Facebook or on Instagram, you know, um, Helping, helping people at all price points, uh, something along those lines. And again, helping agents in your area who do do luxury, ask if you can repost for them, and then also post some condos or rentals, you know, show that you work with all price points. So be versatile, I guess. And... What did you say? The be versatile and then see. Yes, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Thank you. Sure. And if you do a newsletter again, incorporate both, you know, um, you know, speak to the whole audience, not just luxury or not just non-luxury. Thank you. Davies, I, I see you posting um, the, the requirements for luxury agents. Do you want to just share that with everybody real quick? Because not everybody on here is currently a luxury agent. So what does it take to become a KW luxury agent? Yeah, definitely. So, 
Oh, yeah, God, sorry. Please. No, no, no. You go. No, no, no. I didn't know if it was addressed to, to me or not, but no, no, no. You go, Dalvin. Uh, no, so here in South Florida, you have to sell a few properties. In Broward County, it has to be over 800000 And then in Dade County, it's $1 million. Now, you can mix and match. It could be, you know, you sell one in Dade and two in Broward. Um, but you do have to sell over those price points. And once you do, then the market center will receive a notification saying Davies is now qualified to be luxury. And they can go ahead and move you over to luxury. And now that means that you're able to use the luxury branding. You're able to do all that. So then I'm sure you get to do luxury masterminds over here with Christine and with Sandra. So it's a really cool opportunity, Um, but it is, it could happen very quickly. Definitely, And it's a total of four and it could be on the buy side or the sell side. And it's a total of four in two years. Right. So it's a rolling two years. So every, with any 24 month period, you have to have four in that period or you can be dropped out. Exactly. Exactly. And there's lots of perks that come with it. Like I was just talking about the luxury symposium. Um, I mean, it was great. It was a great experience. It's a great way to meet other agents. We learned a lot. Um, The luxury masterminds on Zoom are wonderful. Um, So it's really, it's it's a great community. Um, There's a new luxury class. I don't know if it's new, but there is a luxury class that I've never done before. I'm actually scheduled to do it tomorrow. It's um, 10 to 5. Yeah. Uh, have you taken that, Christine? I haven't yet, just because we were traveling. We went up to Boston and did some traveling. So it's Carolyn Ho um, who teaches it, and she is amazing. So I highly recommend it. Um, she's really, she's she's an amazing person, and you'll learn a lot about luxury. It's kind of a little mini symposium um, for anybody who missed the one up in Boston. Awesome. And that is open to everybody, right? You don't have to be a luxury agent. So for any of you that want more information, um, that class starts tomorrow. If you didn't get an email about it, feel free to email me and I can forward you that information. Um, It is by Zoom. So I will be sitting on my couch doing it tomorrow and really excited about that. Um, And actually, Caroline is going to be our next host or our next uh, person that I'm interviewing next month. So in uh, in November, we're going to actually have her on here and you can ask her questions directly. And she is fantastic. So anybody who can join that, I highly recommend it. Awesome. And also just um, please note in the chat that I did put in the link for the LinkedIn referral group if you want to be part of that. And if you want to ask me any other questions, um, please reach out. It's Christine O at kw.com. Um, I'm more than happy to help, um, you know, with anything. Thank you, Christine. Does anybody have any more questions? We have a couple more minutes if anybody right. has any more questions. Otherwise, we can wrap up a few minutes early if, if you guys are all uh, full of knowledge now. And is everybody on here from your market center or are they from, or are they agents all over? Um, I, I, I can see a few shaking their head. No, um, we have a lot of market centers close to where we are. Um, probably where you are, you're a little bit more spread out. Um, we have within a 20 minute drive, we have multiple centers. So I think we've got a couple people from some of the neighboring ones that are here. Great, great. Well, please, I'd love for you all to email me, like I said, Christino at kw.com. And then I'll certainly send you my LinkedIn seminar that's going to be coming up in November. Um, We'd love to have you all be on it. I'm excited. I will definitely be there. Great. (laughs) All right. Any other questions from anybody? Nope. Um, any brokers or someone that you look up to, maybe on YouTube or maybe podcast that you watch, something that you like, enjoy? So I listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, gosh, um, one that I really like, well, Tom Ferry, I do listen to all, and he has a great social media one every week um, where I learn a lot. Um, it's kind of, he always talks about what's going on and what's the newest rage. Um, Dustin Brome. I also listen to it's massive agent. He's great. There's one called over ask. That is very good. There's another one um, that I listened to when I first started and it's two women and very, very great. Good for, for newer agents. And it's called hustle humbly. 
Um, and it's really great. They they just did an entire one about a newsletter yesterday that I found was was really great. If you guys don't do newsletters, I highly recommend doing so and listening to that one because it had a lot of great information. Um, but those are the, the top ones that I listened to. Okay, thank you. Sure. Good questions. Anybody else? Those burning questions? Um, there was a, you name the two ladies podcast again. Sure. Um, so hustle humbly. Do you so know they're KW HUS. agents? They're not KW agents. Um no, but they're very good. And again, when I first started out, they really they 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 go through our listing um presentations, buyer, they they really kind of they talk for an hour. It's really basic, but very, very, very good. Um, two agents from two different brokerages who are just friends. And it's it's excellent. Their newsletter one yesterday was great. Excellent. Awesome. All right. Any any other questions? Davey, so are we good with the chat? Yep, everything awesome. is good. Um, this is being recorded, so I'm gonna stick it in all of our Facebook groups as a side note. Great, awesome. and please send me the link and I'll put it on my YouTube as well and promote it on LinkedIn as well. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, well- Thank you all so much. This was such a pleasure. Please email me and stay in touch and thank you so much. Thank you, Christine. Thank you both. Thank you everybody for joining us and hopefully you'll join us again in November when we have Caroline as well. All right. Thank you. Make all. it a great day, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.